All right, welcome to another instructional video. In this example problem, we will use Bernoulli's equation to find a height h, as shown here, that just results in cavitation in the siphon, which is taking a suction from a large tank and discharging to atmosphere. This example problem is actually uh, very similar to one I worked in a previous video. However, there are some added complexities. One being that the uh, siphon diameter changes. It's a five inch diameter at the outlet and it reduces down to uh, three inches diameter at the upper uh, elevations. Also a bit unusual in this problem is that atmospheric pressure is measured by a water barometer. Water barometers are not very uh, common in large part because atmospheric pressure will support typically greater than 30 feet of water uh, as shown here in this example. So the atmospheric pressure at the free surface of the water level in the tank is equal to the pressure due to the height of the 30.2 feet of water plus the vapor pressure, which is at the uh, top of this enclosed two. Before we continue on, uh, since we're going to be using Bernoulli's equation, we should, uh, in fact, uh, review the restrictions on the use of Bernoulli's equation. So let's go over that very quickly. And here they are. Is one, we need steady state. We need the flow to be inviscid, so we can ignore all friction, form losses, etc. Uh, incompressible flow, and the flow needs to be along a streamline. Okay, so as we apply Bernoulli's equation, we need to select some points, hopefully connected by a streamline. Not hopefully, but should be. When we apply Bernoulli's equation, clearly we're going to go from one point to another point that's connected by a streamline. One of the uh, terms in the uh, Bernoulli's equation is the uh, elevation. And so we need to select a datum, and a convenient location is at the outlet of the nozzle. So that will be our datum. That is where Z is equal to zero. Now I've labeled the uh, surface of the water in the tank as point alpha. Uh, this makes sense. We know it's atmospheric pressure there. It's a large tank, so the velocity is zero. And the elevation of alpha uh, is our unknown H. So that's a pretty convenient location. Another location, Bravo, I've put at the uh, highest point in the siphon. Uh, this makes sense because the basis of this problem is to uh, find the height of the water, H, that results in cavitation in the siphon, and the highest point is going to be the point where uh, we reach the vapor pressure first. Last but not least, Point Charlie is the outlet of the nozzle. It uh, should become clear that we need that, uh, but regardless, uh, it's a location where we know the elevation and the pressure, and so it's a it's a likely candidate. All right, well, let's start solving the problem. There are many different ways uh, to do this, and many different ways to do it correctly, in fact. But uh, first, I'm going to start off with applying Bernoulli's equation from point A to point C. So Bernoulli's equation consists of a pressure term, dynamic pressure plus uh, the elevation term. So that is the mechanical energy at A, and since there are no losses, that will be equal to the mechanical energy at C, although it will come in different forms, but uh, pressure term, So there we have Bernoulli's equation from A to C. So now we can simplify. Well, what do we know? We know that the free surface of the tank is at atmospheric pressure. Similarly, the jet at the outlet of the nozzle is also at atmospheric pressure. And well, we defined our datum to be at point C. So the elevation at C is zero. The elevation at A is our unknown H, so we don't want to lose that. And it's a large tank, so we're going to assume that the velocity in the tank is very, very small, negligible. And we're going to treat that as zero. So when I do that, I can solve for the velocity at C in terms of our unknown H, and it comes out to be velocity at C is equal to square root of 2 G H. This should be no surprise to you, uh, Torricelli's 
theorem uh, says that's what the answer is and the fact that the diameter is changing if we ignore losses uh, it doesn't change the result on that uh, I'm just going to go ahead and note because it turns out that will be convenient that uh, velocity of c squared is just going to be equal to 2g h so we'll probably come back and uh, use these equations before we go on let's uh, note our unknowns All right now we have 2 which is h and the velocity at c we don't really care what the velocity of c is we're not trying to find that uh, we are trying to find H, and uh, so clearly we have two unknowns, one equation, so we need to keep going. All right, so we got some more work to do, so now let's uh, apply Bernoulli's equation, point alpha to Bravo. So I'm going to be a little bit repetitive, but let's go ahead and write down all the terms for alpha. And again, for now for Bravo. And let's simplify. Again, velocity at alpha, zero. The elevation at alpha is our unknown h. And, well, the elevation at Bravo is looking at the diagram H plus six feet. And well, velocity at Bravo, we don't know. We know the pressure at Alpha is atmospheric, but using the barometer, we know that atmospheric pressure is equal to the vapor pressure plus the height of the water in the barometer so it's going to be plus rho g times 30.2 feet and the pressure at Bravo we're solving this problem so we just reach vapor pressure so it is also the vapor pressure now I'm going to go ahead and explain rewrite this expanding things out so I have on the left hand side the vapor pressure plus rho g times 30.2 plus rho g h is equal to the vapor pressure plus the dynamic pressure at b plus expanding the h plus 6 quantity Rho G H plus Rho G times 6 feet. Now let's go ahead and cancel some things, simplify. Well, we see we have a Rho G H term on the left side and the right side, so they cancel out. Similarly, vapor pressure, one on the left side, one on the right hand side. So they cancel out. And what I'm left with will be the velocity of B squared is equal to 2 times G times the quantity 30.2 minus 6 feet. Writing down the answer, velocity of B is equal to 39.5 feet Per second. Well, I still have two unknowns. So now I know the velocity at B, but I still have the unknown at H and the unknown uh, velocity at Charlie. So still got some work to do. Let's use conservation of mass to relate the, uh, to find the velocity at Charlie. So we know that mass flow rate at Bravo is equal to mass flow rate at Charlie. So the continuity equation so I have rho b bravo times pi diameter bravo squared over 4 is equal to the density times velocity charlie again pi times the diameter charlie squared over 4 
Canceling out. The terms we get velocity at Charlie is equal to velocity at Bravo times the ratio of the diameter of Bravo over the diameter of Charlie, that ratio squared. And in fact, now we can solve for this. So the velocity at Charlie is equal to 39.5. Feet per second times the ratio 3 over 5 squared. And that is equal to 14.2 feet per second. All right, so that's good because earlier we obtained the equation that V sub C is equal to square root of 2GH. I now know the velocity at Charlie, and I can solve for h, so h is equal to bc squared over 2g, that's equal to 14.2 feet per second squared over 2 times 32.2 feet per second squared and our answer is 3.14 feet I hope you found this snippet useful. If so, then please like and subscribe. Thanks, and have a great day.